Welcome back to MovingProfessional.com. So today I'm going to go over how to break down a forward bend and uh, how to quickly improve your range of motion. So there's two things we're going to look at. We're going to look at first getting a posterior weight shift, which is just basically shifting the hips back before you bend forward. And then we're going to look at improving the extensibility of the entire posterior chain. So the first thing we're going to do when we look at the forward bend is we're going to try to get this posterior weight shift. So we got to get the hips back first so then that we can go straight down. All right, so one good way to do this is put a block between your knees, and that just is going to activate a little bit more core musculature, pelvic floor, adductors, and then I want you to bend your knees and just get down there any way you can. By bending your knees, it allows you to shift back further into your hips, and then you can just stand on your hands. And then from there, our hands act as a stabilizing structure. We can push our hips back away from the head, feel that stretch, and then stand up. We're going to go back down, bend the knees as much as Necessary, almost like you put your belly on your thighs and then reach your butt away from your head and then come back up. We're going to do that 10 times and we always retest first, get the butt back, see if we can put the knuckles on the ground this time with the knees as straight as possible. So the next exercise we're going to look at is we're going to use this post as a target to get our hips back and improve that posterior weight shift. All right, so if we can find the post, we're going to put our butt against it and then walk a few feet away. And we really reach the butt back, try to find the post, and then we can put our hands down. Again, the knees can bend as much as they need to, but you just want to make sure you have tension in the posterior chain, the hamstrings, and then reach back down, okay, and then stand up. All right. If you're pretty tight, then you might have to bend the knees a little bit more, but I do want you to touch the ground. But first thing is you gotta really reach your butt back and find that post, and then you can bend the knees and go down without losing the tension in the hamstrings. All right, then again, we're gonna retest our forward bend, see how far down we can go. It should be somewhat better. Next, we're gonna look at using a band to improve the ability to get the hip back into the socket. So we'll do one hip at a time. We're gonna get the hip, or the band right in the groin. We're gonna walk forward, and then the band should feel like it's pulling you back. As you bend forward, you wanna feel like you even creep forward a little bit more and let the band pull you back into the socket, the hip into the socket. And when you stand up, you're going to lean forward a little bit and squeeze your glutes. And then the next time you let the band pull the hip into the socket, you might want to creep forward a little bit more. And then you stand up, feel your glutes contract as you go into hip extension. Go back down, feel the hip be pulled into the socket, and then back up. All right? So this one, I want you to do one side at a time, retest. And see if you feel a little lopsided after doing one side at a time that maybe you're being pulled to the right. If you just worked on the right, it's a little easier to get down onto that right side. And then you're just going to do the other side. So about five to ten forward bends there. Next, we're going to look at improving the length of the posterior chain. So the first thing we're going to start with is looking at an active straight leg raise with some support from the post here. You can also use a door frame. So you're going to get on your back. Get as close to the post as possible. Other leg extended straight out. All right, now you get a good stretch in the posterior chain of the right side. If that's too tight, you work yourself away from the post. If you want to get more, you have your buttocks flush against the post, and then you're going to bring the opposite leg up for 10 repetitions. You can also work on trying to actively use your hip flexors to pull the leg off the post, which will give you a little bit more active lengthening in the posterior chain. All right, so again, this is one after you're done, you want to stand up, retest, see if one side feels like it can move a little bit better than the other. Make sure you're getting those hips back and not leaning forward to try to test your uh, range of motion. If you lean forward, your back muscles are going to feel like they're not supported and they're going to guard a little bit and it's going to limit your range of motion naturally. And right, now we're going to really look at the posterior chain uh, section by section. Uh, using some soft tissue work. So we're going to actually look at the base of the skull first, so right behind the bony parts of the neck. And then we're going to move into the thoracic area, which would be on the inside of the shoulder blade. So for the base of the skull, we're going to use a yoga block just to elevate things a little bit. And put the ball on the yoga block and guide it right under the base of the skull. And we're going to just basically nod yes or no. Both of them will create some increased pressure on the ball. So when we nod yes, we're going to be opening up the suboccipital region, creating a little bit more space there, which is often helpful. And when we nod no, we're going to be creating rotation, which would be 
more of a transverse pressure on the ball. All right, so we're going to look at both sides of the spine for about two minutes each. And then we'll take the yoga block away, and we're going to move on the inside of the shoulder blade, which would be in the thoracic region, the area of the rhomboids, hands behind the head, supporting the head, and then we can bridge up and down to various spots that are either stiff, which meaning that it's difficult for you to get your back all the way out, it feels blocked, or just tender, like there's soft tissue trigger points in that area. And again, we're going to look about two minutes expanding the whole length of the shoulder blade, uh, two minutes on each side, and then we'll get up and we'll retest again. Let your head hang this time, the shoulders hang, and really feel if there's a difference in how easy it is to let the head and the shoulders hang because that's the area that you were just looking at with those movements. Now we're going to move down to the lower body portion of the posterior chain. All right, so we're going to go with the hamstrings, and then we'll eventually get into the calves. All right, for the hamstrings, I like using a nice firm box. All right, we're going to take a pinky ball or a tune-up ball, put it right behind the thigh. Now the hamstring goes from the knee all the way up to the sit bone. So we'll start by the sit bone. The key is to lean your body over your thigh to create a little bit more pressure. It also promotes more of this forward flexion that we're trying to work on. All right, and then you're going to find the most tender spot, and then you're going to try to kick the leg straight toes pull to the nose, and then bring it back down, and then push your heel into the box. I pull up, toes to the nose, and pushing the heel into the box. And you can spend about two minutes in the whole back of the thigh, but what I recommend is find three spots, one on the top, one in the middle, one by the knee, and do about 10 kicks on each spot at least. And then you can just explore for the rest of the two minutes going transverse. You can look at your hip internal external rotation with pressure there. All right, but we just really want to explore that whole posterior chain. Next, we're going to look at the gastroc uh, soleus region, or just the posterior leg, back of the leg, all right, which is just a connection down the posterior chain from the hamstring. All right, so the top of the gastroc actually attaches to the back of the knee, which is where the hamstring uh, leads off. All right, so we're just going to get this black myo ball and put it right under the leg, stack the other leg on top, all right, so if we want to elevate a little bit into a bridge, we're going to create a little bit more pressure doing that. The other thing that works well without having to use your arms as much is just stack this leg down to the spot and then move the foot or the hip in and out. All right, and then you can also just plot a point and point and flex, point and flex the foot back and forth. And that should contract the muscle and then stretch it right on the area of pressure. All right, so about two minutes each side, exploring. Again, after we're done, we're standing up, we're retesting, seeing if the one side we worked on feels a little bit more limber, and you can you feel like you're almost being pulled to that side a little bit more than the other side, and then we're gonna work on the other side right after that. All right, so two minutes each side. All right, the next, the last piece we're gonna look at is the uh, plantar fascia. Right, the last part of looking at the posterior chain extensibility to help your forward fold is the plantar fascia. So this may seem like it has nothing to do with the ability to bend forward, but basically this is the bottom portion of your posterior chain. So your calf, which we just worked on, goes into the Achilles, the Achilles goes through the periosteum of the heel, and then eventually goes to the plantar fascia. So we just want to take this pinky ball or tuna ball, put it under our foot, create as much deep pressure as we can. And we want to promote a little bit of dorsiflexion, so if we can keep the heel on the ground and kind of load in the dorsiflexion a little bit, that's the movement we're going to need when we go forward. All right, so we're going to promote that a little bit as we're rolling from the toes to the heel. And then we can also go transverse, going from the outer part of the foot to the inner part of the foot, trying to create as much pressure on any tender area as possible. This is very helpful and preventative for plantar fasciitis. If you have a history of plantar fasciitis, you want to be careful here. All right, but if this is something that you haven't done, it can be very tender. All right, but you'd be surprised how it can actually help your ability to bend forward, especially if there's any limitation down by the Achilles tendon or in the back of the leg. All right, and after we're done, we always retest. Do one side, then retest the other so you can see if there's any asymmetry after working on the mobility. Alright, so if you have any questions, you can hit me up at movementprofessional.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.